featured a 13 heat match between the Kelly Carter Lions and the world champion select captain by six times world champion Ivan Major. Joining Kenny Carter, the England number one, in his team of five were such stars as the Graham brothers, Alan and Andy, and Steve Bastable. While Ivan Major's side had a strong Scandinavian flavour, Jan Anderson and Hans Nilsson being the pick of the riders. On the tight, glazed concrete circuit, crashes were inevitable. Indeed, in heat one, Kai Naimi was involved, and it was in judged that he had committed a foul. So he was excluded in the rerun, and that's where we join it with commentary by Dave Lanning. So the rerun of heat number one without Kainemi a judge to be the cause of the race being delayed. So it's Carter on the inside, next to him Major and White, Alan Graham for the Lions. Now on the outside in the blue helmet colour. Here we go, heat one again. And uh, the tapes have gone. The riders on their best behaviour. So for the third time of asking, here's heat one. Carter, Major, Graham, that's the way they're done again. Carter, made a terrific start. Going with him to Graham Lavelli, almost over to the second turn of the line, Major through in second place. Remember, it's just 118 yards around in this tiny Wembley circuit. And uh, Graham has picked up Ivan Major, and there's a proud record. Major reckons he has never fallen on the hard surface, but no doubt about that one. But it looked like he was knocked off, and he looks in a fair bit of anguish as well. A nasty one there. It's a tough old boy, Ivan Major. We've seen him in uh, some hair-raising spills. And Alan Graham, clearly the rider to blame. Let's have a look at it again in slow motion. You can see all the action at the back here. Major turning for the corner. Graham coming up on the inside of him. And Graham just doesn't turn. And that's a clear case of a rider being knocked off. And uh, Ivan Major goes a long way before running into straw bells. Oh, not a healthy one uh, for the galloping grandfather. Well, here is Ivan Major back percolating. It's going to be a two-man duel. And what a, what a two-man duel it will be because, intriguingly, Carter, of course, the England number one. And here's Ivan Major, who is his manager off track. So it really is a fascinating battle. And we do recall our minds drift back to Los Angeles when these two were on the phone to the referee. If you're a Speedway fan on TV, you remember that. Both of them have been reprimanded about their behaviour. The outside, two only, hit one, and again it's Carter. And Ivan is a crafty old campaigner. And he just does enough. Carter will screw it on. Remember, it's a tiny polo midget track here. And Carter in control at the moment in practice here earlier today he made a big hole in the safety fence just up here you might just see the mark as he goes through into the last lap and Kenny Carter looking back for Ivan Major he's a long way behind the Kenny so there is the flag three points to Carter's lines two to Ivan Major there is Carter and he's given the home representative side a flying start looking across the lineup on the inside Andy Graham reserve being brought in for John Davis after an impressive opening ride next to him major grid three Simmons in blue on the outside Kai Nimi in yellow and black this is heat five quick promotion for Andy Graham after a tremendous win first time Andy Graham gets away and so too does Nimi and Nimi going very wide there on the second corner. That's let to his Wimbledon teammate, Martin Simmons, through into third place. So Graham, again, proving to be something of a trump card for England. He's in front. Major holding on to second place, although he has uh, Markham Simmons buzzing around there, trying uh, to find an opening, waiting for a mistake. There's the battle for second place, and this is where all the action is as two of the really uh, most experienced practitioners of Speedway in the world play cat and mouse and Major again so many years in the business, so many years on to the inside John Davis who hasn't got a point yet next to him Anderson unbeaten, Mark Simmons grid three on the outside Finn Thompson in the yellow and black quarter helmet he'll be in grid four, hit nine and again it's Anderson, oh, what a start and Davis grabs a big handle of throttle almost impedes uh, his partner and that's uh, let Tim Thompson through into third place with Simmons at the back. And uh, Davis is all over the place here. He doesn't look at all comfortable. He really must just stop running. 
battle is for second place. There's Davis. Anderson's a mile in front. And Thompson just uh, standing off Davis. And the full pirate glamour boy is a bit more comfortable now. He was a bit hair raising early on. Anderson is half a lap in front. Davis should just hang on to second place. Third place, Thompson. So a 4 2 win for the World Select, which uh, makes it even closer. The lineup for Heat 10, the inside, Nelson next to him, Graham, with three, Grunderson on the outside, Parker, James again, have made a flyer, and it's Grunderson in front, Nelson coming through on the inside, and uh, Alan Graham going after them, and Graham has gone into the bells. Graham remounting, he's going to have to move pretty quickly because the Danes are almost round back on his tail. Third place is Carter, not nearly the force, and Carter's going to go here, round with the bait, and uh, turns right round and stays in third place. And it's all the fun of the fair. The Danes are in front, and uh, we've got riders going every which way at the moment. The Danes are going to win it. It was Nilsson, then Gunderson. Carter, despite doing a most balletic pirouette, is third. And Alan Graham just finishing having remounted. Wonderful stuff. And sweeping it clear, the track star. And the racing uh, has proved to be uh, just a little bit better than we've seen before, which shows that this kind of racing maybe has a future after all. Well, just two heats to go, and there is the score, 33-32. The time for gambling by Kenny Carter's side manager, that's Cyril Maidman, the Wimbledon promoter, who brings in Joe Owen. Let's have a look at the lineup for heat 12 on the inside. Anderson next to him, Carter, grid three, has Gunderson, and on the outside, the trump card, Joe Owen going as a reserve, and the Carter went out there with Anderson. Owen moves into third place. In fact, it's uh, now Gunderson moving back, and Anderson again going clear. He really is the thorough polished professional on the glazed surface. Second place, Carter. Third now is Gunderson. Owen, who uh, only dropped one point, is at the back there is Carter. There's the distances into the last lap, just uh, around about 120 yards to go. It's 118 yards, of course, around the inside. And this is Anderson completing an untroubled maximum. He wins it. Second place, Carter. Third was Gunderson. There's the score. And we have a last heat decider with the world champion select just one point in front as we move into heat 13. And it looks as though it is Davis that's come back into heat number 13. It looks like Davis, indeed, coming in in blue. So here's the lineup for this last race on the inside basketball. Next to him, Nielsen. Grid three has Davis on the outside. Ericsson is all on this one. Heat 13. And Nielsen has had a flyer. Nielsen's away in second place in his basketball. In third place in his Davis. And uh, Ericsson really is almost overcoming it. And so too, Davis looking for him. And Davis is in terrible trouble on the bottom corner. Looks like it's going to be the world select with Nelson anchored them. Second place basketball. Third is Ericsson. And just one 118 yards now to go for Nelson to collect his third win of the afternoon and make sure that the world select maintain their record at indoor speedway. He wins it. Second place basketball. Third was Trevor Ericsson. So that means a 4-2 heat win in the last race for the overseas side. And the final score, which we add up to be 37 to the Kenny Carter select. There's the score. Kenny Carter's lost 37. The world champion select 40. And an afternoon's racing that may well be remembered more for the incidents and the pileups rather than the final score. Well, certainly throughout the event, one rider outshone all others, Jan Anderson, who achieved a maximum 12 points and so retained his undisputed mastery of the indoor game. But now for something you haven't seen before, certainly on this program anyway, a challenge between two women riders, Bobby Hunter, who races regularly in California, and Madeline Fundin, daughter of Sweden's ex-world champion, Ovi Fundin. It was a best-of-three race meeting between the two, and before they started, Gary Newborn spoke to the girls 
and first asked Bobby how she thought it would work out. Well, I, I've never really seen Madeline ride outside of practice here, but hopefully we're both going to put on a pretty good show and, and it'll be a competitive race. What are your tactics going to be, Madeline? Pardon me, I didn't hear... What, what are your tactics going to be against Bobby? <laughs> I'm just going to do my best. <laughs> That's it. A moment of speedway history. Over the years on World of Sport, we've seen the sport in the rain, in the fog, in the snow, in a blizzard, in the desert, on ice, on concrete, even on crushed ant hills. But this is a very rare moment. Girl riders, two women riders for the first time in an official British mixture for nigh on 50 years since the days of Faye Taylor and Eva Asquith back in the roaring 20s. We have never seen lady riders before. That is a very famous name in Speedway, Madeline Funden. She'll be in red, the 19-year-old daughter of five times world champion Obi Funden and her opponents, much more experienced, Bobby Hunter in the white helmet color, 25-year-old from California who races regularly against the men, although it has to be said she hasn't raced for 18 months. So it's going to be tricky out there for the girls as off they go. Madeline Funden snakes in the corner. Bobby Hunter has overcooked it, has gone down. And she's brought down Madeline as well. And oh dear, the girls have made a crashing impact on Wembley. Let's have a look at it again and you'll see that uh, Bobby Hunter really is the victim of impetuosity here. She gets to the corner first, does it all right, turns the throttle on and just turns a beautiful pirouette. Madeline Funden clips her. That brings her down as well. And well, it's been difficult for the men, so it must be difficult for the girls going out there cold. So the restart, neither of the lassies none the worse for that tumble. This is Madeline Funden, of course, her dad Ovi, such a legend at Norwich and latterly at Bellevue. Bobby Funden drives a forklift truck for a living in California. And let's hope they don't uh, overdo it again away this time. And it's Bobby Hunter, but still takes it to the corner. And there's no question, the girl has got the right technique. In fact, uh, oh. Madeline Funden almost tasted the boards there. Did well to avoid her. This is Bobby Hunter. As you can see, maybe she's not going quite as fast as the men. Madeline Funden in a little bit of trouble at the back. Bobby Hunter untroubled. By our reckoning, she's going a little bit under two seconds, a lap slower than the men. But, uh, oh, Bobby, you really must not turn on too much gas the last lap and again he really uh, does grab bottle by the fiscal but the crowd are loving her for her efforts and so for the second race in this queen of wembley and hunter away again from the outside although madeline funden wrote a crafty line around the inside and she's in front back comes uh, hunter Funden going round again, leaves the gap, and Bobby Hunter is through. And well, the girls are really having a dice up. Bobby Hunter saying, looking as though she's stood it up nonsense from her lesser experienced rival. Who's in front now? Let's watch her style. And as much she gets clear, her cornering technique is genuine speedway. Just knocks it off a little too long going into the turns, perhaps. She looks the part, going clear now, Bobby Hunter, the Californian bombshell wins the second lead race, and that makes her the queen of Wembley, and she's a queen who certainly isn't lacking in courage. <laughs> well, Bobby Hunter obviously coming to terms with the basic techniques of Speedway, and clearly her experience of racing in California was a help. As I